You are watching The Daily Decrypt, where we bring the currency competition. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by Black Halo Bid Halo. Some people create online stores, and other people create cryptocurrencies. But rarely, if ever, have we seen someone creating an online store and the cryptocurrency to go with it. Voxelis is the name of the VR store, and voxels are the only type of currency accepted to purchase them. Here to tell us more about that is Voxelis founder Halsey Miner and Voxel, the cryptocurrency developer, Jim Blasco. Each of you, in turn, please tell me uh, what your involvement is with the project. What is your role? So I'm, I'm the founder of Voxelis uh, and the majority shareholder. I'm actually co-founder, majority shareholder, um, and and really sort of the, the driving force between us creating the Voxel um, um, as a really joint venture between, uh, you know, Jim and, and uh, Michael Turpin and the guys at Voxelus. Okay. How about you, Jim? I am the creator of Voxel, so it's uh, the digital cryptocurrency for the Voxelus VR platform. Um, that's what I was uh, brought in to do with Michael. Michael does the PR and um, it was up to me to make sure that there was a secure coin that was quick and uh, perfectly usable for everybody in these virtual reality worlds. I'm also the founder and, and majority shareholder and chairman of Uphold who's also involved in the stories. Okay, um, All right, very good. Well I have a few questions that are specifically for you Halsey and a few that are specifically for you Jim. Um, sure. Halsey, um, I would I'm very interested, I don't know if I've ever heard of, so some people create stores, right? And some people create cryptocurrencies, but I've never seen anybody create a store and a cryptocurrency to go together. What, what gave you the idea to do that? So I don't know if you um, know this, but Mount Gox stood for Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. And that's a game and for decades, there's been a problem, which is if you earn money in a virtual world, you can't transport that money out of the game. So, so no matter how creative you are, no matter how cool things you build, they get stuck. That, that money is stuck. And so, people like Magic: The Gathering set up exchanges to try to sell these in-game currencies. And then when Bitcoin came along, Magic the Gathering said, oh, here's a much better way of creating a currency that can um, escape borders and become much more fungible. So they gave up on their in-game currency business and they focused on the digital currency business. So when we started um, Voxelis, which lets people build their own worlds, lets people create content that can be used in building worlds. We wanted people to be able to, from wherever they are in the world, to be able to not only earn a living in this virtual world, but to convert that money back into a usable form for whatever currency they have. You see, there's no law that says that you have to work in the real world to earn money. You can actually do things that are valuable in the virtual world and earn money too. And people have known that for decades. And in fact, the reason we call Bitcoin a virtual currency is based on the fact that this was these these it it originated from a game currency, an in-game currency. So what we've done really is for the first time created an ecosystem that allows people globally, they don't have to have be have dollar accounts or euro accounts, whatever, to be able to Build, upload, sell, create, monetize, and then and then off then and then in, you know, like eBay, like uh, YouTube, be able to actually sustain themselves off of their creative uh, uh, efforts. You know, I didn't know that Mt. Gox had was people trading in-game points originally. I guess no, I assumed Magic, that they were trading yeah. trading cards, but yeah, well, it was well, yeah, but I mean, they're they're I mean, basically, it's the same thing. They were okay. They, it, it was it was Magic the Gathering, and any any item that you bought in an in-game world, 
it was impossible to get your money out. Right. Now, you could buy Beanie Babies and exchange them on on eBay. So there was a market for Beanie Babies, but there was no market for any of these games. And so, you know, people would win, would, would have, you know, they'd level up characters and all kinds of stuff, but they could never get any money for it. Hmm. So, All right, so now, Jim, is uh, do I understand correctly that Voxel, the cryptocurrency, is a fork of Litecoin? Uh, will you please give us a brief overview of the tech specs of Voxel? Okay, so <clears throat> a lot of people get confused when they, they, they ask this kind of question because they don't realize that Litecoin is actually a fork of Bitcoin, and a lot of people have forgotten, it seems like. So really, Voxels is partially Bitcoin. It's Litecoin. And we've taken some ele elements from um, Peercoin and added that in there and some things from Feathercoin. So we're, we're kind of like this mutt of a mix of really awesome stuff. And we've got oh. this, this great coin. Well, let me ask you, um, I guess, some of the basics. Uh, is it proof of work or proof of stake or delegate? Yes. What is it? It's a proof of work coin. And okay. um, as far as we know, it may be the only proof of work coin with a checkpoint, advanced checkpointing server built into it. So. I think we're one of a kind in that aspect. Okay. And is there a coin cap? And what is, say, the block time? Okay, so the block times are still pretty close to Litecoins. They're two and a half minutes, which makes us about four times faster than Bitcoin. Um, there's 210 coins, uh, 210 million coins, which were all pre-mined and offered in crowd sale. Um, the numbers were broken up. They offered 15%, which was 31.5 million coins for sale during the crowd sale. The rest of the coins won't be sold until actually they've sold the first 31.5 million. So okay. there's no problem with the large inflation of coins or anything like that. So it's 100% 100% pre-mined, is that correct? Yeah, and you're going to see that, I think, with the future of all cryptocurrencies that are made for um, in-game systems or corporations, companies, anything. All this is going to be pre-mined because... You can't just say, well, why don't you take Bitcoin? Well, there's a good reason, because you can't control the ecosystem of it if it's Bitcoin. If it's your own coin, you can issue however many you want. You can control the inflation of it. You can set the price initially, and then really the community takes over after that. Okay. So now where will the reward come for people doing the proof-of-work mining um, if there is zero inflation because it's 100% pre-mined? Yeah. There's actually zero payout for mining, so you know mining voxels wouldn't do you much good. We have our own set of network of miners that mine voxels just to keep it running. The fact that it's fully pre-mined, we don't need miners. We don't need anything like that to keep it going. We've eliminated that. Okay, so the the voxelless company is 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 uh, making up the infrastructure of voxel, the cryptocurrency. And 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 uphold who are also contributing uh, ongoing security um, to the platform. So um, you know, I think our goal is to make it the uh, the most secure coin of all of the coins, um, and to have you know very strong built-in DDoS protection, et cetera. So so you know you know the, the idea behind the voxel is to make it the perfect currency for VR. And so, you know, here's the way I look at it, right? So, so you know, our stretch goal is we want to have 320 million people by 2020 using um, using the Voxel. Now, we'd like to have all of them on, on the Voxelist platform, which is not unrealistic when you look at uh, things like Minecraft, um, which, you know, we actually have more use cases and more content than uh, in ecology. Uh, but but if you think about it, right, and you say, well, if these guys have 320 million people who use this, that makes the currency basically the same size or number of participants as the U.S. dollar. And I've been, you know, very um, uh, clear from the very beginning that I think the future of of vertical currencies are currencies that satisfy very specific use cases. So I think we're moving away from just using the currency we're born into to using the currencies that we believe in. And I think five years from now, the money you hold in your wallet will say as much about you as a car you drive. And and it's you very, say as you drive a car, okay? Uh, if you want, I'm driving uh, the Ford plug-in hybrid 
uh, whatever, whatever that says. Well, I know so much more about you now. Yeah, I well, know. now, Halsey, did you have, was Voxelis already planned as a virtual current, or rather, virtual reality software store before the idea of the Voxel came along, or did were they planned totally to be together? So we, I launched Voxelis, and I did not have the currency in mind. What happened was, I was I remembered probably one of the most influential books that I've ever read, which was called Snow Crash. And in that book, it was it was Neil Stephenson who now works for Magic Leap, and and it won the Hugo Award, and it was the basis on which uh, the um, uh, Matrix was was uh, created. And it was the first time that virtual reality and virtual currency were in the same book. And they were called, um, they were called uh, Hong Kong Bucks. That was the name of the virtual currency. And people were actually using virtual currency because all of the, uh, the regular currencies were debased, um, but, but not the virtual currency. And I read that in 93 when I was starting CNET, and it has always had a profound effect on me, as it has most people who have read it. Uh, most people who haven't read it have at least seen the movie The Matrix, so they get the idea. And so I realized, like, you know, we're at the point where science fiction is going to become science reality. And, you know, I, I like innovating. It's like you know, gets me out of bed every morning. And, and that gave me the inspiration to put together something that, uh, you know, that, that made a virtual world more tangible and more real. And now the virtual currency games, not virtual currency, I keep getting mixed up with virtual currency and virtual... Virtual reality. Let's just go VR. I'm going to go VR. VR. So the VR offerings from Voxelis are available now. Is that right? And there's like a sort of stage where like for the next couple of weeks, all the VR games are free. And then after that, Voxels will be charged for them. Is that right? That, that's correct. So what makes this different than many other virtual currencies is that if there are 100 million people playing the game, there are going to be 100 million people who have to buy voxels. So, so it's not that they're just a, a currency that's nice to use, you know. Uh, or 100 million people you hope buy voxels. <laughs> well, we, we can't guarantee. We can, only, we can only build our business, build our mm -hmm. vision, and see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but... And but, and now, know. Jim, uh, the the crypto voxel is being traded at least on Bittrex. Is that right? Am I? Uh, is it being traded anywhere else other than Bittrex? I believe Shapeshift said they plan to pick it up as well. Yeah, there's um, <clears throat> Uphold hasn't launched yet, and Shapeshift hasn't launched yet, and we're always trying to get us listed on some bigger exchanges. But uh, Bittrex right now is where you can find voxels. Uh, since it's launched, it's been number one in volume every day since it's launched uh, a week ago or wow. about a week ago. Yeah, well, no, yeah, it's doing very uh, well, and Uphold should be very coming well. very soon. And and just to just to you know, this is a very important point. When Uphold launches, you will be able to buy the Voxel with any account in India, China, the EU, the U.S., or any major credit card. And that's because as of now, we just announced India, Uphold supports connectivity into all of these monetary systems. So you will be able to go and convert, buy voxels uh, with money from India or China and convert it to gold. And so the voxel inside of Uphold will be fully convertible instantaneously into 24 other currencies, including Bitcoin, and into four metals. So you can turn your voxels that you've earned into gold, if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. So we've created a, a, a system by putting these two, by putting Uphold together with the voxel that allows people to be able to earn money building really cool stuff. And, you know, just like has happened in YouTube, um, and to be able to convert that back into whatever currency they need to pay their bills. Mm -hmm.
Um, and now, is is Voxel Voxel the cryptocurrency network? Is that open source? Can I go view that on GitHub, for example? The Voxelist platform is open source. So if you're into VR, that is completely open source. Oh, the uh, games as well are open source. Yeah, the, the system, the, the platform itself is open source, and okay. uh, Martin from um, Voxelist.com is working hard to bring in all kinds of VR content. They just landed a deal which brings in, I think, uh, what was it, Housley, like 20,000 well, so, virtual so, reality so items. Well, so we, we signed a deal with Flat Pyramid that brings in 7,000 VR items that are already um, uh, VR ready. Uh, by the end of the year, we, sh we should have just from them 16,000 items that can be woven into world, spaceships, guns, all that sort of stuff. And... <laughs> then the focus is going to be on bringing in content like Star Wars or Disney. So you can, uh, you can get a Star Wars walker and spaceship and whatever and build out these games that you then effectively live in. And um, so the idea is to create a rich ecology of content so people can create all kinds of games and all kinds of worlds to play them. And and will the will the voxel be tradable in any of these games? So like like I could create a game where I say have like a pub on the moon, and then I can sell what like I can sell virtual beers for actual voxels for voxels. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean it 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 drives the whole ecosystem, but the most important part it solves because people have been selling virtual beers for a long time. What people have not solved is how you take that virtual beer money and convert it into mm -hmm. dollars. And that's what we've done for the first time. We've allowed in-game currency. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'll tell you, it's very hard from a regulatory standpoint um, because Uphold has regulatory permission to do things like convert voxels to dollars that, up, that uh, Voxless does not have. So it was a matter of putting together... Um, it was a matter of putting together the various pieces with their regulatory approvals to be able to do this. It's, it, it, I don't think if I wasn't the founder of both these companies, I don't think it would be possible today to be able to, to, to do this because mm -hmm. I have to know the, the regulations on both sides and be able to make them you know, fit very well so that neither uh, you know, does anything that, that violates any money transfer rules. So Voxel can create the currency, but they can't trade it. Um, and then, and then a poll does currency, but they can they they allow it to be converted into uh, a bunch of other forms. I see. And now maybe this demonstrates my naivete about VR. But like in a voxelist game, could I interact with other people who are also playing voxelist games, or like could I invite them into my game? We're we're the first multi we were the first multiplayer game. And um, and so we're you know we we are very early, which is great because it gives us a chance to build out a lot of functionality before. But we're already um, multi-user, and you know by the end of this month we should have the uh, marketplace up and going. We already have people who want to submit to us uh, objects that they want to sell. Um, so you know the goal is to take what what what. YouTube did in let's say three or four years where they they allowed people to ultimately earn a living on YouTube we want to collapse that down to a year um, and increase the amount of content that our people have access to um, so the voxel is you know there you, you can't pick one currency because if you pick the dollar as your primary currency 96 percent of the country, world doesn't use the dollar so we create this intermediate currency called the voxel and we allow it to be convertible back out into, like I said, mm -hmm. whatever your home currency is that mm -hmm. that uh, you know that sends you bills in in pounds. Uh, you know, we allow you to convert it to pounds mm -hmm. within Uphold. Well, this is all very interesting. Um, thank you for your time, fellas. Uh, Halsey, will you give us uh, any relevant URLs that people can visit to learn more? And Jim, the same as for you as well. Do you have any websites that people can visit to follow your work? Um, you, you know the the, the primary um, you know the the companies I've started are are uphold.com, uphold.com, voxlist.com, and the voxel 
dot com is the website for the voxel itself. You can find me on the same sites as well. I'm also all over bitcointalk.org. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, there. what's what's your username? Uh, it's Jim Blasco. Oh, okay. Just like your real name. All right, very good. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. thanks thanks for your time, fellas. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. It's great Bye. to see yeah. you. Bye-bye. Okay. Today's episode is brought to you by Black Halo Bit Halo, which was among the first to offer what many call the most basic use case for smart contracts, the double deposit escrow. The escrow client is compatible with both Bitcoin and Blackcoin, and you can download it for yourself at blackhalo.info or bithalo.org. And now it's time for you, dear viewer, to leave your feedback. What say you of cryptocurrencies which are created for products and products which are created for cryptocurrencies? Interesting indeed. Leave your feedback below. Thanks. Machik Olpinski is a technology blogger who got his start at Google and who has recently begun exploring the potential relationship between cryptocurrency and virtual reality. Uh, we'll be able to uh, create this virtual worlds, which are basically hosted, maybe not hosted on the blockchain, but where the consensus at the, um, as to you know what happened in the virtual world who owns what, or who owns a particular piece of virtual real estate, uh, it will be hosted on the blockchain. 